Now I've completed all the wiring uh, and this is the uh, stage where uh, one fires up the machine for the first time. Now you do need to follow the instructions uh, from Inventables very carefully uh, because I've just had a go at doing it and I've made a bit of a, a whoopsie. Uh, in the instructions it tells you that you need to load onto your computer uh, the drivers for the Arduino computer which is in this little black box here. And it then says, uh, when you do this, and you're going to a, a specialist sort of Arduino website to do it, don't whatever you do, then run the software uh, that then drives the Arduino. Okay, it's quite clear. So you follow steps one, two, three, and four, but you do not do step five. Well, I loaded the drivers from this particular website and I ran the software. Uh, and don't ask me why I did it, I just did it. I'm sure I'm not the first and I don't think I'm going to be the last. So I sent a quick email to the customer support people at Inventables. Uh, this wasn't set up in advance, I just sent them an email uh, and within a couple of hours, bearing in mind I'm in UK, they're in America, uh, so they sleep when I'm working, <laughs> uh, and they sent me uh, the instructions uh, telling me what to do. And it's, quite straightforward uh, and I will um, make sure that uh, these are described in a separate video or in a separate sort of sum up video that I'll do at a later stage. Well I'm really grateful to John Hayes at Inventables for helping me out there. It's now working, I'm now going through the test routine uh, and what I'm actually doing now is I'm in the easel setup uh, part of the program uh, and uh, it's now inviting me uh, to check uh, the machine to make sure I've done the wiring correctly. And here you can see the uh, uh, test uh, screen, uh, which is uh, you can access through easel, uh, and it says test your wiring. Uh, you've got X left and right, Y forward and back, and Z up and down. Uh, and using these little uh, buttons, you can make your machine uh, move. Uh, and if it works, you say yes. If it doesn't, you say no. Uh, if you get uh, any no's there, uh, when you press continue, it will give you some help as to what to look for. Uh, and uh, if you have no success through that, do look at the forum. Here's the X. Nothing. Why? Nothing. When I first fired the machine up, uh, this was the bit uh, which wasn't making the proper connection. This was the only failure in my wiring. X. Um, and that's in both directions. My Y. That way, all the way to limit switch. Back again. Uh, Z down and back up again. So that's yes to all three of those. And it then asks uh, now under the settings, uh, do I want to have manual or automatic spindle control? Uh, I prefer manual uh, for now because I'm a novice uh, and that means I have to switch the switch here. Just turn the spindle on and off, and that's what I will uh, select. Um, does your machine have limit switches? Yes. So it's going to start the homing cycle. Here we go. It's going up to the top one in the Z direction. Now it's going to both the X and Y, and it's now detected those limit switches. And that's then the end of the routine. So the whole machine is fully checked out, passed with flying colours. Now there are several important things to do as part of the commissioning process. Uh, first is to check that the uh, z-axis is absolutely perpendicular to your table and in my case that is absolutely spot on. Uh, but if you needed to make an adjustment it's uh, easy enough to do. Um, this piece of maker slide, which is here, uh, needs to be adjusted. And it's held on to the uh, main uh, carriage here uh, with four screws from the back. And there is scope for a little bit of adjustment. Next one needs to adjust uh, all of these uh, V-wheels here uh, to make sure uh, that they're uh, absolutely uh, right on the 
uh, maker slide. And you've got them not only uh, on each side of the Y carriage here and the other side, uh, but also on the X carriage and, and also the Z carriage. Now, the bottom ones in each case are adjustable. And what you need to do is to check to make sure uh, that as the uh, carriage moves to and fro, uh, that these bottom adjustable wheels are spinning as they should. And an easy way to check is to try and uh, move one with your finger. When it's in the right place, as you try and rotate uh, that wheel, so the carriage will try to move at the same time. Now, I saw someone uh, say that if you need to make adjustments in here, it's easy enough to put a, a hex uh, spanner on here, uh, but uh, they're too long uh, for this location here. Uh, well, there's an easy way around that. Uh, I've got uh, dozens of these, uh, all in the same size, so I've just uh, taken one of them and I've cut it off uh, so that it can get into here. Absolutely no problem at all. Now the steel on these is quite hard, so as you try and cut it off, you'll find it uh, will take a little bit of effort, but uh, it's easy enough to do. Then finally, we need to check the tension of the belts. Now, uh, for me, it's been about uh, three or four days uh, since I first put these belts on, and in that time, they are going to stretch. And so you're probably gonna need to undo uh, the end clamping piece uh, and feed a little bit more of the uh, belt through and then reclamp in the same way as before. Well, there we go. That's my very first uh, go uh, with the X car. Ignore this. That was from something completely different. Nothing to do with the X car. It was a bicycle with my name Peter, uh, and that was fine. Uh, and then I thought, well, I'll be really ambitious. So I took a a, um, uh, a JPEG and imported it into uh, another software package, and then made something which uh, could go into uh, Easel. And I came up with. Uh, the New Brit Workshop, and I, I also tried this uh, uh, picture of me, which you may have seen on my YouTube channel, but that didn't work out so well. Uh, but that's only because I'm a total novice at CNC work. But you can see that, that for uh, sign writing and so on, Easel is going to be uh, quite a useful package. And there are some uh, little uh, graphic shapes there already, and you can make up your own, and you can import stuff uh, from other packages into Easel. Now, shortly after I'd gone through that uh, commissioning process, uh, I tried to uh, write the uh, word X-carve uh, on a piece of oak, uh, which I'm gonna use as part of the cabinet, which is just out of shot here. Uh, that I'm uh, making for the X-carve. I wanted to have a little name uh, on the front, which I thought would look good. So I set this piece of wood up uh, in the X-carve uh, going in this direction. And um, I used easel uh, to write the word X-carve on the screen of my computer. And then eventually I sent it uh, to the uh, X-carve itself to uh, cut it out. And I, I don't know if you can see this clearly, but there you can see X carve. But when it came for its second pass, uh, it started uh, in the wrong place. And I looked very carefully at my setup uh, and I really wasn't sure what the problem might be. Uh, so I looked on the uh, Inventables forum and sure enough, I found someone who'd gone through a similar problem. And it was to do with the V, v pulleys not being adjusted properly. Uh, and so I checked the adjustment and, and lo and behold, I did have uh, one of those just a bit too tight uh, so that the uh, Y um, uh, motion uh, was being uh, inhibited. And that's why uh, it tried to go all the way back to the start position and failed and, and started again in the wrong place. So uh, you do need to check those V wheels to get them right. And just to prove uh, that I ended up making a, a proper job, uh, here it is. And I think you may have seen a little bit of this uh, being done uh, in one of the videos that I've done so far. And that's beautifully clean. I've not sanded this yet. If I sanded that surface now, uh, then that would be absolutely perfect. Absolutely lovely. So I'm really, really pleased with that. Well, that's now the end of this commissioning video, but there's a couple of things I'd like to say. 
Uh, first of all, if you're in any doubt or if you're not sure about whether you want to get one of these or not, go to the Inventables website, look at the instructions for the assembly and see just how good they are. That will give you a feel for the sort of company that Inventables are. Also, take a look at the forum. I, I used the forum to find answers to some silly little things that I was worried about, and it was very, very useful. And you'll also see there uh, the sort of uh, customer support that Inventables uh, will offer their customers, because uh, there are lots of people who've written into the forum and saying, yeah, I can't do this, can't do that, and then boom, straight in comes uh, Zach or someone from Inventables with an answer, and sometimes even with a video to say, this is how you go about it. So it's really well worth doing that little bit of research. Now, I've been asked several times already uh, whether I recommend this machine, and the answer is, you're watching this video, I only make videos about machines that I recommend, and I have absolutely no hesitation in recommending it to you. I know I haven't yet explored the possibilities of 2.5D or 3D carving, that's to follow, but everything I've seen so far uh, puts this machine absolutely into the definite list for me. Uh, and just to finish off, uh, I've decided that I need to make a video that uh, talks about the, the software side of things, or in, uh, I'm going to call the video XCarve Coding, and that will be the next video I release uh, to explain how you get a computer uh, to talk to the uh, Arduino and so on, and how that then talks uh, to the XCarve. I'll talk about the coding side of it, not the wiring, and I think that's important just to get a picture in your mind of how all of this works and what software components are needed to make it work properly. Uh, I'm then going to be concentrating on my uh, movable XCarve cabinet uh, and, um, and then who knows, lots of projects using Easel, using VCarve Pro and so on. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.